You're welcome back to Afia TV News tonight and our conversation segment. The Nigeria's entertainment industry, specifically the film production arm, is laced with so many challenges facing it in terms of production in Nollywood. And this includes lack of funding, poor production quality, the need for reorientation and technical training, and challenges in scripting, storylines, and characterization. Directors also face challenges in dealing with all aspects of film production, and these challenges have led to issues such as compromised production quality, low consumer loyalty, and the short shelf life of Nigerian movies. The industry also faces criticism, pressure from censorship boards, and the need to meet the demands of the target audience and cultural trends. Well, to address these challenges, there's a need for sustainable funding sources, government support, legislation and policies to stimulate and sustain quality productions in the Nigerian film industry. Wednesday was a tough one for Nollywood and Nigeria as two of our great talents, the Kanywood actress Sarah Tugidado, who died shortly after the Ramadan prayers, and of course, John Paul Odomodo, a.k.a. Junior Pope, who got drowned on his way from a movie set in Anambra State. But at the core of the conversation is the risk of production that our actors and actresses are constantly exposed to, environmental hazards at locations, all to bring entertainment to our screens. To speak further on the hazards constantly faced by movie makers, acts and the crew, is Brown Ene, who is the chairman, Actors Guild of Nigeria Enugu State Chapter. Good evening, Mr. Brown, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So first, we'd like to commiserate with you, with the Nollywood community, with Nigerians, friends, and immediate family of Junior Pope, all that he worked with and all that he worked for. It's a very huge loss. But let's start by having you tell us a bit about who Junior Pope was as a person and a dear colleague. Uh, well, um, to me, Junior Pope is a friend, um, a brother, and a colleague. He's someone everybody wants to be around. He's a very jovial person, a professional to the core, who makes um, production very easy for its producers. Junior Pope is also from Ukehe, here in Nenugu State and also a member of Actors Guild of Nigeria in the State Chapter. Yes, he's also married to his friend, uh, his best friend, and then um, with three kids. Yes. All right. So over and again, actors and actresses are exposed to a lot of hazards, some of which later makes them sick and frail in their life, you know, owing to long hours of shoots and sometimes poor welfare environments. What other hazards are very life-threatening? And how can we make the environment less threatening for them? So what immediate steps can be taken to give our talents a better experience and a lifestyle whilst they try to entertain us as well? Okay, um, just like you said, the uh, filmmakers, not just the actors, but also the crew members, just like what happened yesterday. Um, Junior Pope is one out of four, out of five persons that lost their life in that um, incident. Yes, yeah, so for me, um, there is need for us, especially the producers. These are people who are responsible, um, who are in charge of not just the welfare, but the lives of um, their boot crew and cast on set. So if, there is a lot to be done by the producers. Yes, starting from um, signing an agreement with filmmakers even before they get on set. Yes, the biggest challenge we have is that we do this work without contract. Yes, because um, if there is a stipulated contract, we are even your life is being insured while you are working. It will make things easier. It will make the filmmaker or the producer to be more careful while planning productions. Yes, because um, you don't joke with people's life. I, I don't know why, you know, you are crossing a river to a location and um, you will allow an actor or your crew or members of your production to jump into the boat without a... a, a a diver or a, a life 
God. It's so unfortunate. Yes, and um, apart from that, we also employ most of the times people who are not even filmmakers. There is the other incident. There is the other incident that happened. Um, there was it sometimes uh, last month in Onisha. Thank God we didn't lose a life. Uncle Ima Yalogo um, on a movie set had a critical accident because the person who was acting to be his driver is not even a, a, a professional driver. It was somebody they picked from the road to come and just act as a driver without knowing that this person cannot drive. So eventually he couldn't control the, the, the car and then um, if not that uncle was able to you know make a fast move he would have been dead by now but thank god we were able um, to avert that issue so a lot is why we face these um, challenges or rather hazard on set it's important to make sure that members of your crew your production team are professionals that have undergone trainings knows the integrities of what they are doing and how best to do it yes it's also very important that we as filmmakers try as much as possible to provide some certain important things like the first aid is a shrine in our constitution and also even the agm bylaw that a filmmaker must have a first aid um, um standby on each set Imagine if we have had that on what happened yesterday, maybe the CRP would have been um, um, implemented on these persons and probably they would be recovering from the, the, what happened yesterday. But because these measures are not put in place, um, we had to lose five persons at the same time. So a lot should be done. Yes, the, the Nollywood family should also come together not just the actors, but also the Producers Association of Nigeria, the, cinemat the Cinematographers um, Association of Nigeria, and also the De uh, Creative Designers Guild. We need to come up as a body. For instance, in what happened yesterday, we have just one actor and four members of the Creative Designers Guild of Nigeria. Yes, yeah, so it's not just about the Actors Guild of Nigeria, but also about the members of the Nollywood family to come together to harmonize things. The actors will say if there is no face aid, um, let actors don't go on set. The producer will say, do you know the budget of my production? Why are you telling me face aid? Do you have? Do I? Do you know if I have such money, or do you know if my budget can accommodate this? And when this hazard pop up, uh, hazard pops up, we find it difficult to to remedy them because we are not prepared enough. So a lot has to be put in place. We need to be serious about what we are doing, even as an actor. It's unfortunate that my brother, maybe because they have been there two times before what happened happened, he felt there is no need for the lifeguard. But had it been, he insisted. He is the star of the production, for instance. So if he had said, I'm not jumping on this boat if there are no uh, 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 safety guards. I know maybe they would have pro provided him with one, knowing fully well how important he is for them on set. So these are more uh, things I believe we should look into and see how best to, to remedy them. Yes. Yeah, very critical points that you raised there. And some people, of course, social media, uh, and some people have been speaking up, and some celebrities have also said we should. This is something that um, happens almost all the time. There is always a scapegoat, but permits the language before you know we spur into action. And some people have said that this. Let's let's talk a bit about the criteria of becoming a producer. What does it take to be a producer in Nollywood? Is this an all commas affair where people, you know, just become um, um, producers from nowhere? Maybe they feature on a film and then the next thing they're producing, you know. Also, you spoke about um, AGN trying to come together as a body to enforce some of these regulations because I think that if there are some task force on ground, probably some of these things will be regulated, especially coming from Asaba, where it looks like um, everything and anything goes in that place. So a lot of people um, 
who have also featured in some movies in Asaba, I began to speak up on Facebook. And one particular post caught my attention of a lady who says, and she got about 15K shares on that post, that there's as much as risky daredevil situations where people bring on set anaconda snakes and say, well, they've charmed it with juju and it will not do anything. And then people are used to going to river just any river and then no um, security person, any wild animal could come out from the bush. And so many things she highlighted there. So basically, what's the criteria of being a producer? Do you just have someone make some fund, raise some money and say, well, I'm producing my movie and there are no standards to these things? Just like you said, there are two ways of being a producer currently in Nigeria. It's either you have the money to make a film or you are registered into the organization to start making your film. Well, I think it should be beyond that. Yet yeah, because um, you having your money to make a film and you don't know how to protect the members of your crew and cast, you know, giving them a whole lot of risk um, on set is also a huge problem. Then just that you have registered into the organization makes you a producer is also a problem. I think it shouldn't end with the proper registration process. Everybody or anybody can afford this money to become a member. Yeah, also the fact that even the Nigerian regulatory body is finding it difficult to, you know, regulate productions in Nigeria becomes also another huge problem. Whereby when this person has the money to make a film, he doesn't care or she doesn't care uh, if there will be questioning how are you able to make this film, what kind of story are you telling, who and who are actors on this set, how many days do you intend to film, what security measures are you putting in place, or what safety measures are you putting in place. They will just go make the film and release the film automatically and they are making their money. Like for instance, a movie that is going to YouTube channel, just like what they were filming in Asaba. You don't care about government to make this film. You know that once you have your content, YouTube is there, you upload and you start taking your little money out of it. So I think if we as a body, the Association of Movie Producers, will you know, make it a compulsory thing that even after your payment to become a member, you go to training, seminars and workshops, you know, before becoming certified as a producer, it will go a long way. Because this training will also expose you to the hazards in filmmaking and how to avert them. You know, it will also give you reason to take proper care of your members, uh, the members of your crew on set. You know, it will also provide you with um, reasons for proper uh, contract agreements, you know, to be able to protect people who are working with you or who are working for you on that set. Yeah, so the, the, the challenge there is that everybody is a filmmaker. Everybody is a content creator. As, as far as you can, as far as you can actually afford, afford the, the money to make this project. So that is part of our problems. All right. So, of course, in the spur of the moment, there's been a letter from the president of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Emeka Rulers, banning River Rhine locations, and of course, banning the producer and, in fact, the movie. And this has elicited responses from Nigerians who feel he's a bit too tough on the producer, aside from the ban. What other corrective measures would be um, taken on negligent producers moving forward? Yes, um, I actually want to use this medium to commend the National President of Actors Guild of Nigeria for taking that swift um, decision. It's very key because uh, uh, it's so unfortunate that uh, it, it looks like we are waiting for us to you know, become victims before we can act do the appropriate thing. But just like I mentioned, the AGN bylaw, which was released sometime last year, made it very clear on how actors should be attended to on set as such to make things easier even for the producers but most of the times the conflict is between the actors and the producers or the leadership of the actors and the producers based on the fact that they feel we are hard on them now 
in, in terms of what happened in Asaba. Um, my president did not actually ban um, the producer of the project. He only said that the members of Actors Guild of Nigeria should, for now, stop working with the said producer. Yes, pending when um, we look into what is happening currently and resolve things amicably. Yes, like today all throughout, the president was also at the river to make sure and see if they can be able to recover the, the other bodies that we are still missing. Yes, you, you see that. You, you, you find it difficult to even see the other organizations to, you know, come out when challenges are like this. They want to be on their own and pretend they don't know what is happening. But when it's time to, to, to maybe an actor is making things difficult for them, they will jump out to say we are trying to... to make their productions uh, difficult. Yes, so America realized I've done well in, in stopping actors from working with Adama. And we are currently working on meeting with other guild heads, yes, to make sure that things have been streamlined properly, that um, we have a proper agreement on how a production set should be, para venture. You know, every, every business, every, every, every job, has its own hazard but it's it's important that you also try as much as possible to create a measure in which when these things happen you can be able to reduce the risk in place so we are already setting up a committee to bring together the guild heads and then see how best to harmonize things and make sure that everybody understands the need to put up these measures to make sure that things like this do not repeat itself again. That doesn't mean that there are no bylaws or there are no, there are no rules and regulations that is already holding us. Yeah, so that is um, what is happening currently. Sadly, things like this have also um, thrown Nigerians into mourning and of course the immediate family of Junior Pope. But of course, we realize that the Nollywood in industry itself is a multi-billion Naira industry, which if taken seriously, maybe by the government and other sectors, the private sector as well, it would do so great, um, bring in so much revenue for Nigeria. But moving forward, what three areas would the Guild be addressing urgently in the following issues like poor treatment of crew members, late night shoots also do you think there should be you mentioned it um constantly signing of contracts before jobs and of course the perpetual habits of um probably directors wanting the producer to finish a seven day movie in probably three days you know and there's that constant clash between the director and the producer most of the time what great areas would the guild be urgently working on moving forward I will repeat it again. These things are already in our bylaw. Yes, these things have already been discussed. We had a Congress um, last year in the same Asaba. The reason being is that Delta State Asaba is a red Asaba. Delta State is one place that this carelessness is um, too much. Yes, a lot of people claim to be actors, filmmakers in Asaba thereby doing what they want to do without knowing what they are doing. Yes, yeah, so last year we had a Congress in Asaba where these things we are being read out to the members of Nollywood. Um, the, the, the Congress was, or rather the Committee for the Bylaw was um, Uncle Shegu Arinze. Yes, he was there present to address us, to let us know the need to put things in place. You made mention of shooting late nights. Yes, AG currently said you can film from 8 in the morning to 8 p.m. So anything beyond 8 p.m., you have to start the film by 6 p.m. and shoot till 4 a.m. the next morning. That's if you have a night shoot, then there will be no need for actors to come out from morning and wait till, or rather shoot till the next morning. So they have already looked at that. It's part of the bylaw already. But the producers also will have excuses. Somebody is traveling. He has another job he's doing somewhere. There is need for us to wrap up this job. You know, we don't have too much budget. But I don't know how 
somebody will have a script you want to film and you are not having the right budget for your content. You know, we want to, with our empty pockets, somebody in Asaba can decide to make a TV series for almost zero budget. It's not proper, you know, knowing fully well that these actors need to eat. So uh, some sets in Asaba don't even give their actors food. It's a problem to feed these crew members. And they will threaten you, if you do this, there will be no next job for you. So most of these crew are even, you know, trying to be impress the so-called producers because of next job, which is also part of what is affecting us. Yeah, so I, I know that what we can only do is to continue enforcement, probably in a more hard way, because it's not like we don't have enforcement team, which is being led, the national, the national chairman of the tax force is uh, Kelvin Nuvo, who is also doing greatly well to make sure that actors' welfare are being protected. Do you know that actors do not have a day of rest? It is in this Congress that they also put up Sunday for a resting day for actors. In Asaba, they shoot virtually every day, morning and night. But after this, they were able to understand the need to give an actor a day rest. There are actors in Nigeria, period to now, that will film from January to December without having a day of their own, without having a day to even meet with their family, to even, you know, do other things it's from one location to another, morning, afternoon, and night. Most of these sets do not even have a cooling place where an actor will be, you know, on set with a lot of lights and all that, and you, you cut the scene and the actor is still there sweating when you can actually make a provision of a, a, a van or probably a room where there will be enough maybe fan to calm them down or ac you know for them to feel fresh or refreshed before they get into the next set so these things have been mentioned by the actors guild of nigeria and have also been been into enforcement, yes, but we are also being careful with our enforcement, not to make people, you know, scare people away or make them not to continue with the investing in, in, in the film industry. And finally, there is need for the government to also look into what we are doing. I know that I don't think, apart from politics as a business, that there is another business that pays more or that have more number of employees, employers um, than Nollywood. Yes, I can tell you that even here in Enugu, we have over 3,000 members who are actively working on different states every day. So if these numbers are this much and these people are making money out of this stuff, there is need for government to also look into it and see how they can help us, you know, to enforce these rules. Because I feel if Actors Guild of Nigeria is a union under the Nigerian government, we would do better. Yes, because if you don't, you have the, the, the law to, you know, judge you. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us tonight. Um, Brown Enet, Chairman, Actors Guild of Nigeria, Iniku State Chapter. We'll have to engage you again on some of the abuse that also happens in the industry and get a feel from you on that. But for tonight, we want to say thank you for taking your time out and for sharing your thoughts. And we commiserate with you and the Nollywood family and, of course, all Nigerians once again over the loss of the great act, Junior Pope. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now to end the news, here's a recap of the top stories. National Inland Waterways Authority rescues seven and recovers two bodies in the Anambra boat mishap. Federal government to OK summit on justice sector reform and seeks review of electoral laws. In business tonight, Bureau de Change operators ask Central Bank of Nigeria to ban non-oil exporters from obtaining FX at official markets. On the international scene, female billionaire sentenced to death for looting Vietnam's bank of $44 billion. And that's all that we can take for tonight right here on Afia TV News, streaming live from Enugu, Nigeria. And on behalf of the entire production team, I am Amazing Grace. Ajayi, thank you so much for watching and good night.
Thank you.